সো এই পর্যায়ে আমি চলে যাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকে প্রোগ্রাম চেয়ারম্যান রোটরেক্টর কাজী রাহবারের কাছে ধন্যবাদ রোটারেক্টর নিয়ন্তা মাহাজাবিন প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ দ্য রোটারি ক্লাব অফ ঢাকা ডাইনামিক্স আমি এখন পরিচয় করিয়ে দিতে চাচ্ছি আমাদের ফার্স্ট সেশন স্পিকারের সাথে ডক্টর রোহান বার্টেক উনি আজকে আমাদের যে সেগমেন্ট নিয়ে কথা বলবেন সেটা হলো টোব্যাকো কিলস ইউর ড্রিমস হি ইজ এ টোব্যাকো ট্রিটমেন্ট স্পেশালিস্ট ফ্রম ইন্ডিয়া আমি এখন অনুরোধ করব ডক্টর রোহান বার্টেককে কিছু কথা বলার জন্য আমাদের ডক্টর i mean it's a deadly addiction or something it is very acceptable in the uh, different communities and different societies and it's a very common thing but at the same time the uh, hazards of tobacco i mean it impacts the health of the person in a big way and a lot of diseases and a lot of problems associated with it so i'm going to talk about some basic things about tobacco addiction and all the uh, try to clear the misconceptions so that people don't get into the habit and all those who are into the habit will uh, actually take a decision to get out of this habit before they land up into any a severe deadly illness thank you uh we have dr rohan bartik on camera right now yeah uh, should i start the session or it's fine uh, yeah yes sir you can start, start your session now Okay, uh, English is comfortable, right? You can... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are comfortable with English. Okay, great. Uh, I'll just uh, share my uh, presentation. Just give me a second. Uh, can you allow me to share this, please? Uh, can you allow me to share the screen please sir we have allowed uh, i guess you can okay just yeah thank you okay uh so i was as i mentioned uh, tobacco has a big impact and uh, it is a very neglected thing so i'm going to start with certain basic so when a healthy person a healthy person comes in contact with any kind of tobacco product the end result is this so i'm not here to scare you with all these scary images and of the cancers and everything but this is a reality which we need to understand what we correlate and what we perceive or have perception about tobacco is something very glamorous or something which is absolutely wrong but this is the reality this is the end result of consumption of any kind of tobacco product i'll talk about the tobacco products in detail but this is the end result of any kind of tobacco product so to begin with from where does tobacco come from so tobacco comes from tobacco farm tobacco farm is the only farm which doesn't require fencing why is the tobacco farm or the tobacco farm doesn't require any protection fencing that is because uh, even animals don't eat it yes even animals don't eat tobacco why uh, with a thing which animals don't eat should human beings eat that is not the question my question is why animals don't eat tobacco 
So if you take this tobacco leaf from the farm and give it to the laboratory, just to understand what are the different chemicals present into it, to understand that even at that time when the tobacco is present in uh, the farm, the leaf of the tobacco from the farm, it has a lot of chemicals which are poisonous, which are not edible. So it is not an edible plant and it has a lot of poisonous chemicals into it. In fact, tobacco is, uh, water is used as an insecticide for other farms or the other crops so that they don't uh, get attacked by the in. So over a period of time, what happens is when the cigarette making companies and other products making companies prepare this product, they add more chemicals into it. So the latest research says that when a person is smoking a single cigarette, is actually close to almost 4,000 to 7,000 chemicals. Can you imagine a single cigarette, you are exposed to 4,000 to 7,000 chemicals, out of which 200 are proven poisonous, which have the capacity to produce cancers, out of which 60 to 65 are carcinogenic. Can you imagine the number of chemicals entering your body when you are actually consuming these tobacco products? So when these chemicals are entering the body, they will definitely affect your health in a big way. They will create different diseases. Cancer is one of them. So what we feel is that, you know, actors and all are into this habit. So this is the reality. But reality is something very different. Reality, it is, causes a lot of effect on the body. It causes a lot of financial loss. How financial loss is caused? The cigarette companies, the cigarettes are very costly, so you are directly losing your money. But there are other tobacco products which may not be that costly, but the deal buying is very costly. If you get different cancers and all, the treatment has to be with surgical, uh, I mean, the surgery is performed, there are chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and it's a long standing treatment. So that future health cost is immense. So the whole family gets affected, whole family has to uh, get into a psychological pressure, and whole family has to suffer because of it. So uh, the actors and all what you see from me is not a reality. Reality is that you're actually going to land up into life-threatening deadly illnesses, which will require a lot of money to treat, which will require a lot of, uh, which will bring a lot of pressure to the entire family. So this is a reality which we need to understand and which we need to face. I will talk a little bit about the uh, smoking products. So there are different smoking products which are very popular, but there are two main categories, smoking and chewing tobacco. So smoking are those which need to be lit by fire and smoke comes out of it. So those products are cigarette, BDs, hookahs and chirus. So the cigarettes, everyone knows about cigarette, but there are a lot of misconceptions. People feel cigarettes are safer because it has a filter. Uh, other products may don't have filter, so they are uh, more dangerous. But there is nothing like that. Just remember three important things. First thing, no matter what tobacco product it is, it is going to be harmful. Any tobacco product, where you see fine tobacco into it, it is definitely going to be harmful. May it be a cigarette or any other product. That is first thing. Wherever there is tobacco, it is going to be harmful. Second, no matter what quantity you are consuming it. Like people feel I have only one cigarette or I have only a little bit of tobacco. See, that is not going to hurt. The moment you are having tobacco, it is going to affect your body. No matter what quantity you are consuming. The third is, no matter what duration you are consuming it. Like people feel that only after I, I consume it for longer duration. By 10 years, only then I will get into any problem. But that's not a reality. Even after consumption of very less time, you, your body will get affected and you might suffer from a lot of diseases. So remember this three things always, no matter what tobacco product it is, no matter what quantity you are consuming it, and no matter what duration you are consuming it. So that was about cigarettes. Cigarette companies, uh, I mean, marketed in different ways like like light and low tar cigarette and slim cigarette, ladies cigarette. But remember one thing, every cigarette is a cigarette and it will cause you cancer. All cigarettes are dangerous. Second is BDs. BDs are again a little cheaper form easily accessible and people have these BDs also. The tobacco is wrapped into a leaf. Hookahs, now hookahs, shisha, uh, it is known as, again, people have misconceived that this is safer or this is not dangerous. But let me tell you, these hookah and shishas are four times more dangerous than a cigarette. Yes, you heard it right. It's almost four times more dangerous. The reason being, first of all, as I said, uh, the exposure. The, when you are smoking a cigarette, it will burn out into 5-10 minutes. But the hookah sessions itself lasts for hours together. So attending one hookah session or exposed to one hookah session is like exposed to, you know, 20 to 25 cigarettes. That high is the exposure. Second thing, the hookah companies claim that a lot of flavors into it. But no matter what flavor it is, no hookah or shisha is without tobacco. Every hookah will shisha will have tobacco into it. So it is definitely harmful. Third is... The different uh, chemicals or different poisonous gases released from the sukkas also. One of them is carbon monoxide gas, which is affecting your body. 
there is something called as interstitial lung disease now what is this interstitial lung disease it is called as ild interstitial lung disease now this disease is basically of our lungs our lungs where we breathe the air goes into lungs this organ called lungs so this lungs have elasticity they are a elastic organ because of which when air goes inside inside it they expand because of the elasticity but what happens in this disease called as interstitial lung disease this elasticity is lost the lung tissue get fibrosis and becomes like a stone this, this is a structural change and there is no treatment available in any science in any country for this interstitial lung disease so you have to be very careful because this interstitial lung disease the main reasons are cigarette smoking bd smoking and hookah or shisha smoking so hookah and shisha smoking are equally dangerous like a cigarette in fact more dangerous than a cigarette there are other reasons for interstitial lung disease like environmental pollution or industrial waste but again the main reasons are cigarette bd and shisha and hookah smoking there are other products like cheroot where tobacco is wrapped into tobacco leaf itself and the bigger form the called as cigars there is a new product which is coming up in the market which is the electronic cigarettes or e cigarettes now there is a lot of misconception around this e e cigarettes are nothing but the the tobacco is present in a liquid form and the battery is present because of which the combustion happens and the smoke comes out of it that is why you how we can see the smoke but believe me no matter what shapes and this the mechanism remain the same but because the only difference is here the tobacco is present into a liquid form otherwise it's affecting the body in the same way as a normal tobacco product so it is a lot of research and evidence are available to show that how this uh, electronic cigarettes are dangerous and they are affecting the body every system of the body and at the dna level a lot of countries have taken a decision to ban these electronic cigarettes completely because as i said there is enough data research available to show that how tobacco this electronic cigarettes the e cigarettes are also dangerous so don't fall prey to all this uh, fancy gadgets they are very dangerous and the person who is getting into this e cigarettes tomorrow will graduate into other tobacco products like cigarettes also so please stay away from all these products the other chewing tobacco products we have lot of products in india also and similarly uh, at your place also as i said always remember one thing wherever there is a tobacco it is going to be harmful so it may be a khaini or gutta or pan masala or any snuff which can be taken through the tobacco fine powder and taken through the nose or the mushery which is applied on the gums the tobacco which is applied on the gums or supari or arak nut now there is a lot of misconception around this supari or arak nut what we call in english the arak nut is the base of lot of pan masala and supari the arak nut and tobacco are two different uh, products all together but there is a lot of research available now which says that even this arak nut though it is not a tobacco thing it arak nut also is carcinogenic arak nut also causes lot of uh, diseases in your body so stay away from this arak nut also uh, pan what we have which we have tobacco into it definitely it is also going to be dangerous because lot of uh, and even if it is a simple pan you need to understand that sometimes there may be this kimam into it this kimam is nothing again but a tobacco paste so what are the ingredients of this pan you should also be very uh, clear about and there are sophisticated tobacco toothpaste also uh, by the brand name of ipco and dentobac this ipco and dentobac toothpaste are tobacco toothpaste i have seen actually patients of applying this toothpaste to their gums because again is the same mechanism this uh, it's the like uh, the tobacco consumption only because it is a tobacco toothpaste so these are some of the few uh, commonly uh, available uh, chewing tobacco products but there are a lot and lot of more chewing tobacco products by different brand name different packing different method of consumption that is why i said in the beginning itself just remember one thing wherever there is tobacco it is going to be harmful so don't fall prey to any of the tobacco products there is nothing like that that this product is safer or this is less dangerous there is nothing like that every product is dangerous wherever there is tobacco it is going to be dangerous so why again and again i am saying is the duration so there is a real case in india where this 24 year old guy who actually uh, says ki i consume tobacco for 4 years and he actually suffered from oral cancer and he died during the treatment this is a real case which was admitted in a hospital in india and what he says is very important that he is 24 years old he uh, started uh, uh, consuming just 4 years back and he uh, developed oral cancer and during the treatment he died so the duration is not important it is not that only after 10 years you will uh, get into any disease even after short term consumption you might land up into deadly diseases now again and again i am talking about different chemicals uh, what are present into the tobacco products so what are these chemicals so just to make you understand there is ammonia in your detergent powder what you wash clothes with there is cadmium in your batteries there is paint in uh, acetone in your paint so how many of you are going to uh, you know drink your uh, eat your detergent powder or drink your paint or eat your batteries cell batteries 
no we are not going to do it why because we know that these are poisonous chemicals no one would like to get these poisons in the body but a person who is taking tobacco products made the cigarette or other tobacco products these are the different hazardous chemicals which are actually consuming in the body day in day so imagine a if so many chemicals are entering your body every day it is bound to cause diseases it is bound to impact your body in a big way so please stay away from it and this slide is very important to show to those who are actually consuming so that they understand what are the hazardous deadly poisonous chemicals they are having every day once they come to know hopefully they will get encouraged to quit and come out of this tobacco habit a lot of people like in india itself 10 to 13 lakh people die every year that high is the impact that high is the loss of tobacco uh, deaths occurring because of tobacco related illness it is that huge impact that is the reason we need to have this tobacco awareness in every country this is a uh, second hand smoking what do you mean by second hand smoking if you are not smoking but you are exposed to the smoke from a person who is smoking directly it, this smoke is entering your body then this is called as second hand smoking this second hand smoking is equally dangerous 5 to 6 percent of people who die every, of, the, of the total patients who die die because of second hand smoking. They don't don't just get affected by second hand smoking related illnesses. They die. People actually die because of second hand smoking related illnesses. So please take this seriously. Second hand smoking is equally dangerous. Stay away from smokers. There is something called as third hand smoking. Now, what do you mean by third hand smoking? So if you enter a room, you uh, there is no one over there, but you feel that someone must have smoked there. Why do you feel so? because the particles remain there for a longer time and this particle exposure also is very dangerous a lot of research studies are available to show that how this particles uh, if you are exposed to it is causing a lot of health issues this is called as third hand smoking and you need to aware of, of the third hand smoking also what are the short term impacts of tobacco on the health so there is ear infection sore throat yellow decayed yellow and decayed teeth oral hygiene your bad breath your smelly hair the sensation of taste and smell is lost you are having early wrinkled skin you are having itching eyes watery eyes dark circle under the eye there are certain signs and symptoms in the oral cavity especially with the chewing tobacco like leucoplakia white spots in the mouth or erythroplakia red spots in the mouth or submucous fibrosis the mouth opening reduces so what are the symptoms these are basically pre cancerous conditions we call them pre cancerous conditions and this is a first stage of cancer and if not treated or if not stopped if the person doesn't stop taking tobacco products this is definitely going to land up into this is an indication that they are going to leading to a cancer and a person research says that a person who has consumed chewing tobacco for more than 3 years 50% and more than that starts showing one of these symptoms either a white spot in the mouth either a red spot in the mouth or this submucous fibrosis where your mouth opening start reducing normally you can put four fingers in your mouth but with the person having consuming chewing tobacco they cannot uh, open the mouth fully that is because of the chewing tobacco and this is again as i said a pre cancerous condition because this is going to lead into cancer 100% if the person doesn't stop taking the tobacco product the other seems like non healing also which are taking long time to heal again as i said the consumption of uh, tobacco is very high so it is directly related with oral cancers there are different cancers of the body more than 16 different body parts are affected with cancer because of tobacco consumption apart from uh, cancers there are other systems of the body which are affected are respiratory system other systems different diseases This is the this is the disease infection disease. How tuberculosis and tobacco is related? Basically, if you have a hunger or you have if you if you won't feel hungry, you won't eat, and if you don't eat, your immunity will suppress blood. the uh, size of this blood vessels starts reducing so when the size starts reducing the peripheral body parts like your fingers and of the hands and feet the blood supply starts reducing and actually this part starts decaying actually it gets decayed and this is called as gangrene poisons you know the other parts of the body this part has to be cut 
which is called as amputation. This is very first gang. This is very uh, common in smokers. It, uh, a lot of weakness is because of tobacco and smoking. Uh, if the blood supply to the brain is because of infertility, both lower weight baby, sudden infant death syndrome. So all the reproductive and pregnancy related issues are seen more in women, apart from along with the other tobacco related effects on the health. Women, the reproductive and the pregnancy symptoms are in a big way. So all those women and girls who are into smoking and chewing tobacco, it's very important for them to understand this, that it is actually uh, going to affect their life in future in a big way. So uh, now I'm just focusing on the explaining the negative things for tobacco, but we should always tell the positive angle to it that what happens are the good changes or the, what are the positive things of quitting or stopping the tobacco habit. So as there are a lot of health impacts and social and economic impacts <clears throat> because of consumption of tobacco, once the person stops tobacco, there are a lot of health benefits, there are social benefits, there are economic benefits. Economic benefits are, are very clear, like the money can be saved, the future health costs can be saved. Social benefits, like, like your children won't get into it, your personal health, your personal lot of benefits would be there and health benefits also. So how health benefits? So what people feel that uh, if you are consuming tobacco for like five, 10 years and you already consume so many chemicals, there is no point in stopping it now because the chemicals have already damaged your body. But that is true because the chemicals have definitely must have damaged the body. But once you stop, there is a repair going on in the body. The body has capacity to repair also. So just for example, if you fall down, you get an injury. That injury won't stay for life long. Will it stay for lifelong? No. Why will the injury won't stay for lifelong? Because there is a healing, repair going on in the body. Similarly, when a person stops consuming tobacco, whatever damage the chemicals of the tobacco have caused in the body, they also start getting repaired. So this is a proper research with of WHO World Health Organization, which shows what are the good changes happening in the body from 20 minutes of quitting to uh, years of quitting. The moment the person stops within 20 minutes of quitting, stopping the smoking, your pulse rate and blood pressure starts getting to normal. Within 12 hours, your carbon monoxide rate uh, circulation improves and carbon monoxide level starts dropping. Within 2 to 12 weeks, your lung function test starts improving. Within 5 to 10 years, your risk to heart attack and stroke paralysis drops by 50%. Within 15 years, you are a non-smoker for any cardiovascular disease. So a person who has never smoked and a person who has stopped smoking 15 years back come to the same level for any cardiovascular disease. Can you imagine to what level your body can repair? So this is again very important to encourage people that the earlier you quit, the earlier the body will get chance to repair before they land up into any deadly illnesses like cancer. A lot of impact on the environment also. I'm not going into details of this. So why do people first of all get into any kind of addictions? So there are four important reasons why do people get into addictions. First is the characteristic of the chemicals present in these substances. Like all these drugs, tobacco uh, has nicotine into Alcohol has something into it, narcotic drugs have something into it. So the characteristic of this nicotine itself that it is an addictive. Nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in the world. Like with 10 people are smoking for the first time, there are high chances that 8 to 9 get into the addiction. Like gold has some characteristics, silver has some characteristics. This tobacco, the nicotine, the by characteristic it is addictive in nature. So when nicotine enters your body, it creates receptor level changes in your brain and these receptors keep on demanding for more nicotine. So the characteristic of nicotine is that it is addictive in nature, like any other the chemicals which have their own characteristics. So that is the first reason, that characteristic of these chemicals. Second is personality. If your personality is strong enough, good enough, you can control your body. You can say no to wrong things. You can overcome the peer pressure or if your friends are pressurizing you or you're into a stressful condition, you won't fall prey to, you know, all these addictions. So personality plays a very important role. Third is friend and family support. Friend and family support plays a very important role. Uh, if your friend circle is good, your family support is good, you won't fall prey to all these addictions. And whenever, even if you get into the addictions, to remove you or get you out of the addiction, your friend support and family will play a very important role. There was an important, I mean, there is a famous case study where the Vietnam War took place and American soldiers were in Vietnam. But this war went for a long time, but it was not more of an actual war. It was more of a cold war. So this US soldiers had nothing to do and they were given a lot of drugs to come through. But when the war got over and the US soldiers back to US with their families, friends, 99% of them had stopped all the drugs. 
So the character seek of the chemical is the only thing. All the soldiers should have continued consumption of drugs, but that did not happen. When they were back to a different environment, different situation, with different with the family and friends, nineteen and percent stopped it. So friend and family support plays a very very important role. And the fourth is the stress. It is often observed, and there are a lot of research studies available which shows that when a person is exposed to stressful conditions or working in a stressful environment, the chances of him getting into the addiction increases in a big way. So these are the four main reasons why do people get into any kind of addiction: the characteristic of the chemicals, person's personality, friend and family support, and stressful conditions. Why do people start smoking or into tobacco consumption in spite of the lot of awareness that they know that tobacco is something which may cause them cancer, which may cause them lot of diseases? Still, why do people do it? Because there is lot of curiosity. People feel that I should try everything once in life, or they may not be affected because of it. They are all personal beliefs what they have. Second is peer pressure. As I just mentioned, I do I do lot of uh, treatments also. I counsel the patients for tobacco addiction. Lot of people tell me they started because along with the friend. This is the most common way how people start the consumption of tobacco products. So peer pressure is a big reason. Also, also among the girls, cool people feel that it is associated to looking something like cool or you know fashionable, like stylish. Because a lot of advertisement and movies showcase it in a very glamorous way, that is how people get attracted to it, which is very unfortunate. Because these actors get paid a lot for doing this, and they are ruining the life of generations together. It's very unfortunate. So don't fall prey to all this thing because they are marketing gimmicks just to fool people and increase their customer base. People feel that you can remain slim, slim because of it. Because tobacco consumption, as I said, tobacco kills your appetite. So book mar deta hai apni. So if you are not hungry, again you will stay slim. But it's not the right way because the repercussion. If you consume tobacco to stay slim, this is what will you know, happen to you in future because that is the repercussion for because of the lot of chemicals entering your body. Lobby is very strong. They have do lot of advertisements, spend lot of thing in uh, doing it, and targeting their audience audiences. Like this is an example for how they target by doing this extra slim, feminine, feminized kind of a brand for targeting women. People have misconception that tobacco can release your tension or stress, which is again not a true thing. Because this is no way going to help you know overcome stress. This is in fact going to increase your problem because the chemicals are going to uh, affect your body in a big way. Constipation. People feel that too, if you have a constipation, or you should have tobacco and it will help you. But again, this is the wrong thing because have you ever seen any doctor prescribing three cigarettes or three tobacco products for a person suffering from constipation? No, it is not some medicine. So if you are being, uh, if you find a person who says that I am consuming tobacco. Constipation. He must have started it at the age of whatever after becoming big. So no one starts from birth. So from first ten, fifteen years, he was having smooth bowel movements without tobacco. Second thing, in in the morning, if you take hot tea, hot water instead of tobacco, you will still have the same uh, uh, bowel movements. You don't require tobacco for it. Or you can have, uh, I mean, if salads or you know fibrous food in your diet you will still help into stool formation, and you won't suffer from constipation. So all these things are important, which people are not aware, and people have a lot of misconception that to have smooth bowel movements, I can smoke or I can, you know, chew tobacco so that I get this smooth bowel movements, which is again the wrong thing. So always remember that it is the number one killer. It is killing so many people. A lot of people are getting affected of it, and as I said, whole families are disturbed and getting affected. Today, when I help one person to quit tobacco, I am not helping one person, but I am actually helping the entire family. So all the people who are into it, you should you should uh, explain to them. You should encourage them to be so that they before landing into the, all these deadly diseases, we can actually help them before all these operations. So what about treatment? Now people have again a lot of misconception that first of all people feel it is impossible to quit. People don't know that it is possible to quit. Second, they don't know that there is also help available. There are people like me, experts like me, at every place where they are working for helping people to quit tobacco habit. And when research shows that when they get help, the chances of them getting out of this habit increases almost four times. So first of all, you should make a spread awareness that it is possible to quit, and second, you should take help and help is available so that you can overcome this habit and get out of this habit. We have different protocols for the proper history, understand what the person is about this habit, and we explain him about uh, certain coping mechanisms to overcome the urge when you get the urge, what to do. It depends upon person to person. We explain them nicely uh, about the coping mechanisms. If required, we also explain them or prescribe them certain medication. But the problem with the medication is that the person should not buy it on his own. Uh, it has to be taken under expert guidance. The reason being, first, 
it has to be taken in the proper dose if there is a nicotine chewing gum or a nicotine patch it has doses into it it's like 4 mg 2 mg the nicotine patches are like 7 14 and 21 mg so the expert guide him what dose to start with and how to you know taper it and all so uh, medications i would request that a person should actually take with proper expert guidance and first of all all patients don't require medication those who require it is advisable that take in they take it by proper expert guidance so that the impact the effect is proper so that was from my side uh, if you have any doubts from your side you can definitely ask me this is my number you can uh, store it and uh, whatever queries you can get in touch with me on my email i think the number as well but uh, i would uh, i have some time where i want to understand your queries because this is what i do the awareness about but i would like to know if you have some specific queries you can please ask uh, i request the organizers also to allow the speakers allow the uh, audience to ask questions uh now for the second session uh now for the second session i would like to call dr ananya chitale uh she is a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist from india and she is going to talk uh, she is going to be talking about how to manage stress and loneliness uh do we have dr ananya with us uh yes uh i'm talking to my mother she's going to unmute you yes hi i'm very much there a uh, welcome miss dr anyan yes tale thank you thank you so much okay so uh shall i start uh, uh yes please okay so i hope i'm able to share the screen let me just check yeah i can so now my uh, screen is visible right yeah yes yes okay okay great uh okay okay so first and foremost thank you so much not just for calling me over here but even for the topic that was given to me on the stress management you just now had an interesting session on tobacco addiction and uh, the effects of tobacco so you know interestingly if you go on the internet and study any research papers on addiction and the causes of addiction majorly you will find stress being defined as an important key factor which can put a person or push a person into the vicious cycle of addiction so it is very crucial that we understand stress and equip ourselves with skills that will help us to manage stress let's let's be very clear right from start that we can never eliminate stress right that's why we say the word stress management and now going ahead what is stress see because if we want to learn to manage something we should know first of all what it is right so what is stress so stress is basically that pandora box of emotions that opens up it could be anger or anxiety nervousness tension frustration sadness hopelessness helplessness this all pandora box of emotions that can open when we are faced with the situation that you see on the slide okay when lot of things are going on we are suddenly overwhelmed with lot of things to be done to be finished there are deadlines or there is a big event coming up where you know you have some part to play or you are made to choose or make a choice which is very difficult or you are put in a situation where you might have to take very difficult decisions or you come across a situation in life which is going to change your life 360 degrees right just that we had recently in these times of pandemic so you know these are the situations which put our systems in a position where we find it difficult to deal with all of it right we find ourselves inadequate and we feel that we just cannot deal with everything and that's where the stress starts that's where we experience a huge range of emotions which are very distressing and troublesome that is what is more or less how the stress looks like that is a theoretical uh, explanation of stress right if i want to just simplify it better let me tell you if this is our mind or this is us i look at our mind as a bucket 
okay a bucket which has some capacity of how much it can take in how much it can take inside it right now we all are aware that our environment poses for us hell lot of challenges on a daily basis right we have relationship issues we have uh, exam problems we have our parental pressures we have peer pressures we have uh, an image what we all need to maintain continuously then the covid 19 which is there uh, which has started has definitely triggered lot of other problems in our lives right there are lot of insecurities we don't know what is going to happen in future all these things are very much around us which are taking the space of our mind which are filling the bucket of our mind right and this is almost continuous it never stops i'm sure most of you might have felt in the situation ki when is all this going to end right ye sab kab khatam hoga is it ever going to end Are, am i ever, ever going to be in a position where i could live a life where i just don't get any stress right we all have been through that but let's be very honest the bucket which we have is going to get filled on by all of these factors or all of these stressful situations which we can call as our stressors the things that put us under pressure that put us under some sort of stress right so then what should be done okay this is what we need to understand next one second i don't know why my slide is not going okay so you know if our mind is like a bucket and it has some capacity then there is a tap which is continuously filling it up okay filling this bucket up and this tap is filling our bucket with all these stresses that we have seen and unfortunately we know we can close the tap on our own nor can we increase the size of this bucket right apne paas jitna capacity hai whatever capacity we have got we have got right we cannot go and tell our parents that okay just 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 stay away from my life we just can't do that or we cannot tell our professors that don't you get it so much of pressure we have and you are adding on the pressure of online exams and online submissions we can't do that right there are so many things that we just can't control so this tap which is filling our bucket with stresses is not going to close nor can we move our bucket aside because we know we are in the situation and we have to face it right then what we need to do what we need to do is if the bucket is filling from above we need to have something which will empty our buckets okay that is nothing but what we call it as stress management strategies or stress management skills okay that's what we are going to see in another 20 minutes right but a little bit more about stress now let's remember there are levels of stress okay the first level of stress as you can see the first line from the bottom okay we call it as good stress right remember normally we equate stress with only negativity but it's not that right we know like for example uh if you are going for an adventure sport you all feel that nervousness that tension ki how are you going to do it what is going to happen but then you are not really in uh, in, in that sense affected by it why because this stress is also bringing in with uh, some sort of enthusiasm some sort of excitement or thrilling feeling when you are experiencing this tension of going on an adventure sport i'm sure some of you must be your cricket fans right when our favorite team is playing and you know we have a situation where we need two runs and there is one ball we all experience that anxiety ki what is going to happen whether we are going to win we are uh, tense we are nervous we are all you know tightened up in our seats now that is also stress isn't it we feel that palpitations right that is also stress but it does not negatively impact us why because it is giving us some kind of energy some kind of enthusiasm some excitement is there right or you know i have had a lot of people coming to me and telling me you know ma'am what uh, i need some stress otherwise i won't be able to perform right we perform better many times when we are stressed out you can see the difference right the point when the exam time table is announced the way you start studying you never study for the entire one year right so that stress is something what we call it as good stress because an optimum amount of stress is essential because it can give us excitement it can give us a thrilling feeling and it can also push our motivation levels to a little higher side so that we perform better 
right so this good stress if you are experiencing we want it wahan pe kuch nahi karna we don't need to do anything for that right because that is something positive we need that part to excel in our lives at times what we have to be careful of is become aware ki is my stress level going above this level of good stress are they getting a little more but i am able to tolerate and is it still moving above where you know sorry what is happening where it is now reaching to the level of bad stress right bad stress where the stress that is created is not letting you sleep is not letting you think properly is not uh, letting you do things is not letting you focus is making you feel depressed making you feel anxious beyond control that is then you have to identify that this is somewhere that i am going in the zone of bad stress and if you don't do something to empty your stress bucket at that moment it is going to reach a snapping point and the bucket will overfill and you will snap out okay that's what happens you know when you see somebody suddenly throwing a temper tantrum or suddenly getting angry on somebody it's not actually one second ka thing okay lot has been built up lot of stress has been pented up and then it bursts like a pressure cooker okay so same can happen with us if we don't build this tap of emptying our stresses at the right level so you know what when our stress starts thoda us out of control now when it starts going little bit out of control we have to identify that ki, okay now i am not able to somewhere manage it let me go and practice my skills of stress management so that my bucket gets empty and it doesn't go at the level of bad stress and then spill over okay so this is how uh we see stress right now when i say we need to build a tap means what you can see here four c's of stress management honestly speaking there are hundreds of skills that can be learned on to how you can regulate your stress better and stay calm and peaceful even in the most stressful situation but today i'm going to give you four c's which i think are sort of uh, lie at the core of stress management okay so what are these four c's you can see the simple catch check change and create okay four c's of stress management catch see it is important i keep feeling nervous i keep feeling irritated i keep feeling frustrated but if i want to deal with my this stress i need to know what has triggered my feelings of stress okay i need to identify and catch my stressors i need to identify and catch the things which trigger all this uh, uh, tension within me okay so it's like unless and until i catch that how will i manage that how will i know how what to do about it right so catching your stressors identifying your stressors and possibly even noting down is the first step of stress management you know so it's like how it helps suppose if i have at my uh, college a person i just don't like the way the person talks you know he is a little rude he is arrogant and he keeps on being arrogant with me so i don't like that person so what i would do if i have identified that this person a is my stressor i can build strategies where i have minimal interaction with that person so preventing at the first place for my stress to build up but if it is if if there is a situation where i know i can't prevent uh, talking to that person at least i will prepare myself better as to how to deal with this person and let not my stress spill over or get aggravated right so that's why catching your stressors is very important only then you are in a position to either prevent or prepare yourself to deal with the stress created further in a better way okay so this is catch right then the second part is once you catch okay a b c d are my things which really uh, create lot of problem for me which really put me under tension next is you need to identify every time when a certain situation comes which is stressful which creates a tension within you how are you responding in that situation okay so again when i say catch and check i would suggest that every time literally sit with a notebook or a diary and note your stresses and try to retrospectively go back and think it 
when this thing happened how was i thinking how did i react what did i perceive okay and what did i do when i got stressed what happens is now we all being basically humans work on one principle which is pain and pleasure principle okay now as per this principle what happens is anything which gives us pleasure we want to do that and avoid the pain okay so if my uh, problem in life is giving me lot of stress which is very painful i am going to do things which will give me instant pleasure right one of you even asked that question ki you tend to go to cigarettes uh, what to do if you are stressed or and instead of cigarettes what else you can do right it is our human mechanism where we will do anything which gives us quick pleasure so what happens in this bed when our stress becomes too high na we want quick resolutions we can't tolerate that pain anymore and that's why we are pushed to easier resolutions which are quickly available so it could be anything from eating two bars of chocolates to smoking a cigar or to consume alcohol it could be anything why because consuming that releases dopamine which is known as your neurotransmitter happiness neurotransmitter Okay, and then that quickly relieves your stress for that moment, right? Problem: What happens here is that when you resort to these unhealthy responses, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, going for some substance consumption or eating a lot or eating junk food, they will give you the instantaneous dopamine which you need. But what is going to happen if this unhealthy responses keep on continuing every time you are stressed out? They are going to act as second act, which will create more stress later in your life. For example, every time you get stressed out and you eat five bars of chocolates, what is going to happen? Patients, right? So these unhealthy responses might. give you a feeling that your stress is getting managed actually it can fine but in long and they act another attack which will add on to your stress bucket okay so it is important that we check that how we are tending to respond what are our patterns of responding when we get stressed out and if they are unhealthy you know there is a huge list so when we are stressed out स्पॉन्सेस from you to hear about how to change them is this know what is within your control we call it as circle of control okay what happens is whenever we feel with this and a lot of be back with me but really do i have somebody else's behavior within my control not really what is in my control the way i perceive a situation the way i am thinking in that situation i'll just tell you a small incident that happened what happened was we recently had diwali celebration here in india and i had this beautiful sari which i was supposed to wear for my diwali function and i was folding that sari my 6 year old son comes running to me and he says mama what a cool sari you have brought okay on one end i just told her my side come from this side and see how the sun looks then he came to my side and when he saw there was a beautiful pattern of thread work and stone we we look at things it's very important because if we don't identify that what you know what are the things We shall see what we think, na, is actually what we are talking to ourselves. 
okay so if you are talking in a way which is negative which is uh, self defeating it is going to add on to your stress instead of solving it that's why you have to change the way of your self talk remember your self talk is very very crucial in the way you are going to manage or even be in a stressful situation okay lockdown aaya there is a lockdown schools and colleges are closed everything is closed i had to go to abroad to study my plans won't happen this year everything is over actually is really everything over no it is just a pause it's not a full stop right but if you don't think this way you are going to land up in a circle where you feel more stressed you will get depressed and then you might again fall in trap of addictions to relieve that pain right so it is important that you be careful about what self talk you do and try to change the way you think in every situation change the words change the script that you tell to your own brain or mind okay and this was about catch check change the next is something about create okay please create a to do list of what you can do when you are in that moment of stress you know you might feel you okay ma'am is saying all of these but it's so difficult in that moment to remember right in that moment to gussa aaya to i am going to react i can't control it right that's what happens because the the things that i told you about change are gradual they need to be practiced on a daily basis so two years down the line you're going to be better in the way you manage stress but then what to do so create a to do list to you know when you feel bored when you feel angry what can you do when you feel sad what can you do when you feel terribly worried what can you do when you are terribly hurt you know you can see here a picture but there are hundreds of things so it is important to create a to do list it is important to create hobbies it is important to pursue hobbies it is very very important to go on for simple things in life such as you know uh doing regular exercise or pursuing is in terms of any sort of art form drawing painting weaving knitting any any of these hobbies all of these hobbies what they do whenever you are stressed whenever you are feeling negative angry bored hurt lonely for that matter because we have to understand how to manage loneliness in our current times what it does is that it makes us connected with our own selves pursuing these things the moment you are more connected with your own self so you become more aware you become more rational you get time to think when you take that break and you being reactive engaging into these things helps you to take some pause rethink on the analyze the situation and then respond in a much more rational way that's why these things you know if you make a to do list for example i have my own to do list that whenever i feel uh, terribly angry i go out in a room and i so it gives me that pause it gives me a thought to think ki why am i angry is it necessary that i react in this way is it that bad to have this much of anger okay so it gives me that uh, break that pause when i immediately switch to my hobby and second thing what it does is that it allows your neurotransmitters which get triggered na in a stressful situation the negative neurotransmitters to settle on their own so you can think more clearly okay so engaging into some kind of hobbies then you feel good okay or what is helping you you have to explore that okay and have that to do list to go to when you are stressed out or you are feeling really stressed out okay another thing what happens when you have all these activities now you can see lot of things given your exercise meditation practicing yoga or doing some uh, art craft work or nothing than just going and cuddling your soft toys or if you have pet spending time with your pet and to be honest i'll tell you something you are now young adults but i would suggest that 
do not stop playing when i say word play it means all kinds of play it includes indoor sports it includes outdoor sports why remember we do not stop playing because we grow old we grow old because we stop playing okay so it is important that you don't eliminate play so it could be board games it could be uh, uh, outdoor games all these what do they do they release tons and tons of dopamine on a daily basis when you engage in it now what happens when your mind is primed with dopamine thoroughly okay when there is already a lot of dopamine secreted inside because of all these activities that you are doing on a regular basis whenever a stressful situation comes now you don't get that shattered why because your brain your mind is already in a very calm state because of all the things that you have been doing on a daily basis okay so that will not make you shattered when a stressful situation or a problem comes and you will be in much more resilient state to face that problem okay so it is important to create a to do list of things which give us happiness when i say things which give us happiness again i mean positive addictions not the addictions such as drugs and your screen and your social media is not those okay so uh, there are lots of things that you can do and make a part of your daily life so when i say make a part of your daily life remember it has to be like the way we get up we brush your teeth brush our teeth no matter what it is an indispensable task right same way these hobbies the exercise the sports uh, spending time with your near and dear ones cuddling uh, your pets or you know playing all these things have to be a part of your regular basis uh, regular day to day life okay and lastly create lot of backup plans when it comes to technical things you know which create uh, problems in our life so meeting deadlines uh, career uh, your examinations all these things we know that these are the things where we fumble or we get messed up right so it is important to use simple things like creating weekly schedule creating time tables creating plans semester plans avoiding procrastination if you are continuously postponing things that like, aaj nahi will do it tomorrow tomorrow nahi will do it day after tomorrow that piles on to your stress okay so if you are in a zone where you tend to postpone things it is important to talk with somebody and understand why this postponing is happening and deal with it okay so creating to do list creating backup plans is extremely crucial and last but not the least create a support system for your own self okay when we also mentioned of managing stress along with loneliness what is important here is to also create a support system remember that support system can be anybody it can be friend it can be family it could be a mental health professional remember it is not a mandate that agar it's like if people think that how can i go to a counselor how can i go to a mental health professional you know better i will just go for a movie and my stress will be sorted doesn't happen if you are really struggling to manage your stress if you are really struggling with loneliness if you are really struggling with any any sort of emotion which you find it difficult to manage it is important to connect with a counselor right on time before the problem becomes massive okay just like what we say for cancers that early detection is very crucial and that can change the uh, survival rate right same is with our mental uh, health issues that we face all of us face on a day to day basis when i talk this i know for my uh, thing to be honest that when i find something is very difficult i connect to a colleague of mine right and sort it before it becomes massive okay so creating support systems asking for help is very important okay don't shy away from are how can i say this you know i think people will laugh at me or people might say itna sa to problem hai can't you solve it on yourself no don't shy away ask help from right people at right time okay loneliness again is a very important thing which i am going to talk quickly on 2 minutes on that is that always remember just because somebody is besides you does not mean that he is with you okay he or she is with you remember the best uh, thing to 
crack the problem of loneliness is to first start enjoying company of yourself first start identifying who you are first connect with your own self and enjoy the company of your own self in these times specifically when socialization is still a little prohibited apart from that all the things that you see the to do list the backup plans are also a biggest solution to cater with the loneliness i have seen in fact opposite of what is happening now with the lockdowns being open uh, the the restrictions being gone people want to stay alone people are not okay going out they are now finding it fine to connect only through social media people are avoiding calls people are like whatsapp pe bhej de you know we'll chat on whatsapp you know that is what is happening that is another sign that you will be really lonely if you don't move out right now okay so it is important that remember two things first is first start enjoying company of yourself second connect with like minded people like minded people try to move out of your houses again see it as a task you know today i will go and meet somebody okay otherwise you'll be comfortable in your own world of digital and virtual connection that is going to add to your loneliness in later lives okay last but not the least just a simple approach can help us manage any kind of stress okay quite easily whenever you have a problem in life ask yourself that first do you have problem in life no great no reason to worry okay but if you have a problem in life yes and can you do something about it if the answer is no why worry kuch nahi kar sakte covid ka kuch nahi hoga right to kyu jo hai usme we can still be fine right there are some problems which are just about uh, uh, out of our control so that's fine jo sabka hoga wo hamara hoga right so when you have a problem and you can can do something about it then don't worry and same way uh when you have a problem and you can do something about it then also you don't need to worry right so eventually we really don't need to stress out okay it's just about the change of approach problem ho na ho right so finally i would i would not take a lot of time of yours uh just keep try to keep your stress away and just try to be happy as far as possible that's it from my side for today a big thanks to dr ananya chitale for her beautiful speech uh if you are-